With every new iteration of Super Smash Bros., the most anticipated aspect of the game is the selection of characters that we will be able to play as. The focus is clearly the new additions as they are the characters who get a spotlight trailer in Nintendo Directs and have entirely new movesets that we haven't seen before, well, most of the time. So with the new edition of Smash inevitably going to hit Nintendo's newest console, I thought it was high time that I talk about who I want most in the new game. I'm limiting this list to exclusively Nintendo characters as I plan on focusing on third party ones in a future video, and I'll try to keep it to one per franchise for variety, but with that being said, let's get started. Number 10. So with the Zelda series, it's pretty difficult to choose what new characters could be included, primarily because the Zelda characters currently in Smash, all excluding Sheik, are in many Zelda games. And Nintendo has their bases covered with Zelda characters who fit this criteria being in the game. However, I think for a new Smash game, or even a port of Smash 4, Zelda has to get another character in Smash because it's long overdue. So out of all the Zelda characters exclusive to one game, who do I want in Smash? I choose an imp, Minna. I get that some may feel a bit skeptical about how this one would work, but there are many reasons for why I chose Minna here. First and foremost, I think because of her smaller size, she could have a unique moveset that diversifies her further from the rest of the series' cast of characters. Using some of the notable elements from Twilight Princess and Smash would be fantastic to see as well. She could primarily attack and grab with her hair like she did in that game and have a large variety of long range attacks there are plenty to choose from from Twilight Princess. Speaking of that game, it also just got a remake last year, so because of her recent game appearance, I think it's more likely that she'll get a spot. Now, on the topic of recent game appearances, you might be asking yourself, well, why didn't you just choose a character from Breath of the Wild because it's more recent? To be honest, compared to any of the new characters introduced for Breath of the Wild, I think Minna would still work better. Minna's been a famous video game character for a long time, and that was only amplified further with the Twilight Princess remake. You have to factor in likelihood when predicting characters because Nintendo does factor in popularity when choosing the roster. Makes sense for marketing the game and whatnot. So because of these reasons, I not only want Midna in Smash, but I find that she's fairly likely as well. Number 9. For the next character on the list, I find it very unlikely that he'll be included because of the odd circumstances which surround his specific franchise. However, I wanted to include him on the list because I just want him so badly. This character is Isaac from Golden Sun. Golden Sun was a series first created for the Game Boy Advance and hasn't had a new installment since 2010. So Isaac isn't necessarily a retro character in the same vein as the likes of Duck Hunt or Mr. Game & Watch. He was an assist trophy in Brawl, and while Little Mac can evolve from an assist trophy to a fighter, I would find it fairly likely that he'd be in Smash on Switch. However, this assist trophy wasn't included in Smash 4, suggesting that Nintendo has completely given up on representing this series. Nevertheless, while likelihood has a slight factor in this list for the purposes of being realistic, it doesn't take precedence over my love for this character. The Golden Sun games are fun, it's a very underrated series, and this character being the main one from those games would definitely be a welcome addition from fans. He could have a unique moveset using Rockfall, Quake, and some other famous attacks from his game series. An unpopular choice, but one that would be great to have. Number 8. ARMS is Nintendo's newest IP. It's a fighting game that has characters with extendable arms. It's a very unique concept. And while Super Smash Bros. is more about putting Nintendo icons in the game rather than representing other fighting game characters, I definitely think that one from this series has to be included, and I'm gonna go with Ribbing Girl. Okay, let's be completely honest here. Spring Man is a very basic character. I just find him so basic with his character design and whatnot, and while I would go with a different character from ARMS that would have a more unique moveset compared to the moveset that Ribbon Girl would have, you have to factor in this part here. For a character to be included in Super Smash Bros., one character representing its specific franchise, you want to have it represent some of the basic elements from that franchise and not delve too complex into it. For example, in ARMS, Ninjara has the ability to disappear and reappear in different locations However, certain characters from that game don't have this ability, 
and Super Smash Brothers being this insane promotional game that it is for Nintendo's other franchises, you don't want people necessarily associating the ARM series with disappearing and reappearing characters because that's not what it's about. It's about a type of fighting game with characters with long arms. That's basically it. I do want some arms representation within the game, but because of that reason that I just mentioned, I think it has to be one of the more famous and basic characters from that game. And Ribbon Girl definitely fits that criteria. She has a nice design and I think is a great mascot for the series. Number seven, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 has hit the Nintendo Switch, and I think this is finally the signal for Nintendo to put another character from that series within Smash Brothers. But I don't just want one character for this game. I want two representing it. The duo of Rex and Pyra I think would work great in Super Smash Bros. There are two types of characters within Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Drivers and Blades. Blades which power the weapons of the Drivers, and Rex and Pyra are a very famous duo from Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Now I won't get too much into it because of the sake of spoilers and whatnot, and I don't want to spoil people about the game, but I think because they're the mascots of the newest Xenoblade game, and Xenoblade is continually being getting new releases, I think it's better to have more than just one character representing that series. It's a larger series for Nintendo now, not on the scale of Fire Emblem or Kirby yet, but it's getting up there, it's rising in the ranks, and I think that including another character slot in Super Smash Bros., another one of the duo characters, having two people as one fighter, Rex and Pyra, both supporting each other within the fight would definitely work. And I think you can keep Shulk in there as well because other Nintendo franchises that are within Super Smash Bros. don't only adhere to specific timelines within their franchises. For example, Ike and Corrin can both be included in Super Smash Bros. and nobody really cares about the timeline. So I think that a character in the sequel game to the original Xenoblade Chronicles could still work with Shulk being in the game. There's no real conflict there. Number six, retro characters are a big thing in Super Smash Bros. and if there's one retro character that I really want to be included in Smash, it would have to be Takamaru. Takamaru was included in one fighting game in 1986, and I never knew much about him until I heard some ideas that people were spreading around about new characters that could be included in Super Smash Bros., and after seeing this guy's game, he would definitely work. Takamaru, I think, could have a moveset of a great up-close fighter. That would be what this guy would specialize in, because that's what the gameplay is like of his game. The game that Takamaru was originally from is the mysterious Murazame Castle. Now, this game was on the Famicom Disk System and was not released outside of Japan, which would make him very unlikely to be included, even as a retro character in Super Smash Bros., because Nintendo doesn't like to include characters that are Japan-exclusive in Smash, very often. However, it was released on the 3DS Virtual Console in 2014, which increased his likelihood to be in Smash Brothers, in my opinion, at least a little bit. The Mysterious Murazame Castle now being an international release that people could play on a modern console being the 3DS definitely makes me think that people are starting to become more familiar with Takamaru as a character and they would like to see that game that they played on the Virtual Console come to Super Smash Bros. on the Nintendo Switch. I mean, I'd also like the game itself to come to the Switch, but Nintendo doesn't really want to do Virtual Console for some reason. Number five. For this entry, I chose the protagonist of the new Fire Emblem game for the Nintendo Switch. It was confirmed back in the January Switch event of last year that a new Fire Emblem game would be coming to the Nintendo Switch in 2018. And as you're watching this video right now, you may be watching it past its release date, and you may now know of the protagonist of this new Fire Emblem game. However, I definitely think that you can't really include Alm or Silesia from Shadows of Valencia into Super Smash Bros. because the game was released in an odd point in time, a transitionary period from the 3DS to the Nintendo Switch, and I think that if Nintendo really wants to strengthen their cross-promotioning game on the Nintendo Switch, they have to include the protagonist of the Fire Emblem game that is released on the Switch console. But the reason that I want this protagonist specifically to be in is because I'm very excited for Fire Emblem on the Nintendo Switch. This is going to be the first time 
time that Fire Emblem has ever been HD. Not only is it going to be portable, like recent Fire Emblem games have been, but it's also going to be on the home console for the first time in a long time. Fire Emblem on the Switch is definitely a game to be excited for, and I hope the protagonist of this new game makes their way into Super Smash Bros. roster. Number 4. This one is a classic, an entry from the Super Mario series that people have wanted for such a long time. People have been disappointed at his inclusion as an assist trophy in Brawl and Smash 4. Yes, it's Waluigi. Are there better possibilities for Mario characters to be included in Super Smash Bros.? Yes. Does the lack of character depth that Waluigi possesses hinder his ability to have an interesting moveset in Super Smash Bros.? No. Waluigi is really only included in Mario spin-off titles. And because of this, I think his moveset could combine a variety of aspects from these specific games. He'd be representing the Mario sports games that it has loved so much. He'd whack a tennis racket like he does in Smash as an assist trophy, and he'd kick a soccer ball like strikers around. His moveset being very heavily inspired by Mario sports games would really spice up his moveset a little bit. It wouldn't just be generic punches to your opponent like Luigi's moveset is, although I would expect a couple of oddities being included in his moveset though. Now while this isn't a big focus for this video, I would like to touch on a potential final smash for Waluigi, one that I think would work really well. You know Form and Spike, right? The possible inspiration for Waluigi's design in general General, because they share so many similarities yeah this crane I think you could have a giant one and it'll dump somebody out of it just an insta kill final smash Waluigi broken band incredible number three Pokemon has been confirmed to come to the Nintendo switch however unlike Fire Emblem which I just talked about I don't just want to rely on a Pokemon from the new switch games to be included as the character for Super Smash Brothers no no I want to talk about an existing Pokemon that could work in Smash and this Pokemon is Decidueye. Now, before some of you hardcore Pokemon fans start raging about this pick, I have to clarify some things about how the roster of Super Smash Bros. works when it comes to Pokemon. Look at the roster. The Pokemon that are included in this are all iconic Pokemon. This isn't Pokemon Tournament, which combines a bit of icons with some more obscure Pokemon. No, Super Smash Bros. is about including icons from specific franchises. And I think that Decidueye is definitely going to be a future icon for Pokemon if they promote him right. Decidueye is the main attraction for Pokemon Tournament because he could definitely be a future face of the Pokemon franchise. This is a ghost grass type, incredibly cool looking owl Pokemon. He also shoots bows and arrows. I definitely think that would be used well in the moveset. He would be a good long range character and also have some good up close attacks like Leaf Blade, for example. Another reason that Decidueye specifically I chose for this is because of its grass typing. We already have a fire type starter in Smash, we already have a water type starter in Smash, we might as well put in a grass type starter just to complete that beautiful type triangle that's so ingrained into our minds at the start of every single Pokemon game. Thumbs up if you went to trainer school. But for these reasons, I think Decidueye is going to be very likely, and I also believe that because of the immense amount of moveset possibilities for this guy, he'd just work incredibly well, and I really want Decidueye in Smash. Number two, this character that I'm going to be talking about has immense fan outcry for him. He is one of the most highly requested characters I've ever seen for Super Smash Bros. This character is King K. Rool. The original Donkey Kong series antagonist, King K. Rool would definitely fit well into the Donkey Kong section of characters in Super Smash Bros. I get that in recent Donkey Kong games, King K. Rool hasn't been the main villain, but he could always come back, okay? I know he hasn't appeared in a game since 2008, and that game in 2008 wasn't even a Donkey Kong game, but King K. Rool is still one of the greatest Nintendo villains of all time, and I think for a game series that likes to represent Nintendo's icons, King K. Rool would be fantastic to be included in that game. I think he's fairly likely, and Nintendo knows that we want him in as well, because they put in the me costume of King K. Rool in a Smash 4. He may not have won the 
ballot, but he got our acknowledgement, and that is a very important thing. Nintendo knows that we want King K. Rule, he's fairly likely, and I really want King K. Rule for the incredible amount of interesting moveset possibilities for this character. Within the Donkey Kong series, King K. Rule fights you in a variety of different ways. One game he's a pirate, the next game he's a boxer, there's just an incredible amount of possibilities for moves that you can take from those respective fights. He could have some up close boxing capabilities and then have some long range attacks where he throws barrels at you and so on. King K. Rool is not only a unique villain but also an unpredictable one and this is a great quality to have for a move set because you don't know what King K. Rool is going to dish out at you you know until you've played like 500 matches and then then you'll understand it. And for the number one spot you all saw this one was coming I choose the inkling. <laughs> Platoon is an incredibly successful new IP for Nintendo, and its protagonist character, the Inkling from this multiplayer mayhem ink spraying shooter, would definitely work as a playable character in Super Smash Bros. Like the previously mentioned, King K. Rool and Nintendo has acknowledged the fan outcry for Inkling by including some me costumes for it in Smash 4. There are an unlimited amount of possibilities for an Inkling's moveset. You could use the variety of different types of weapons within Splatoon, like the regular shooters or the rollers or the ink brushes, the dualies, the buckets, there are so many possibilities. And you could even incorporate ink like it is in Splatoon and have it go over the map. I don't know how likely this one is, I don't think that it'll happen just because of the complexity within it, but I definitely think that it would work out well either way. For a recovery, you could use the super jump and it would operate like one of those recoveries where you just hold and it'll eventually go once you charge a certain amount you know fox falco something like that oh and now let's talk about final smashes because this is the final entry on the list let's just go all out about this. There are many specials within the Splatoon games and I think they could all work pretty well. Primarily though I'd like to go with some of the famous ones. The Ink Tornado would be a great choice as well as the Killer Whale. Both I could see knocking out tons of opponents within the match but you know if you're a purist you wouldn't play with the Smash Ball anyway so this wouldn't matter to you. But what probably would matter is the Inkling's inclusion. Such a prominent new character from an amazing new IP that just got an entry on the Nintendo Switch this year, Splatoon 2, fantastic game, fantastic series, fantastic character. The Inkling should be in Super Smash Bros. Now if you want to know more about what I think of Super Smash Bros. coming to the Nintendo Switch, I put together a short little playlist for you that you can watch, a couple of videos that I really think you should check out that you'll enjoy and remember to subscribe for more top tens and more videos about super smash brothers to come very soon thanks for watching guys